I feel like I've been on some bizarro roller coaster ride. Yeah. But there is no way, no how, that 50 states could have certified votes for Biden and or Trump and there have been a stolen election. There's just, it's insane to even think that because people voted. They did find voter fraud in Pennsylvania. Three cases. I believe it was Pennsylvania. Three cases. One attempted to vote as his son after he had already cast his ballot. And the other two tried to vote for their dead mother or father. Right. And all three of them were Trump supporters, unfortunately. As far as voter irregularity, really in this day and age with the pandemic, things had to be changed in the way we voted. I voted early. Virginia started the 45-day early voting window. We voted about 40 days early because we could drive in, go in, cast our ballot, and go walk out, and there wasn't another soul in the polling precinct except the uh, people who were uh, running the polls, the poll uh, workers and the poll watchers. Right. Uh, you did your thing, you uh, filled out your ballot and ran it through the machine and the machine calculated your rich ballot and out the door you went. Mm -hmm. No one handles your ballot at all. Once you uh, filled it out, you ran it through the machine. So it was early no excuse voting throughout this entire state and at many other states. States did not send out absentee ballots willy-nilly. You had to request a ballot. They did send out sample ballots. They did that in Virginia. They did it in North Carolina. Right. But, uh, no. How could you steal an election? This was probably the most secure watched election in the history of this country. It's just unbelievable to even think that there was widespread voter fraud and ballots being uh, thrown out and oh lord have mercy I can't, I can't even begin to think about it I think a lot of people took that information to heart these accusations of fraud and that's why things have been unfolding the way they have well the thing is if you say something enough times People will believe it. It doesn't have to be true. You just have to keep saying it. And people, a group of people will say, oh, well, it's got to be true. No, it doesn't. Where's your evidence? And, it, you know, as a science-oriented person, I, I'm sorry. Oh, show me the money. Show me the evidence. I don't feel comfortable. I feel on edge and very nervous about what can happen if Congress doesn't act. Right. They were put in so much danger because one person thought it was wonderful. March down to the Capitol. Take the Capitol. I'll be right there with you. No, he wasn't. Yes. But... Uh, that was just, it, to me, it was insanity. I never thought I would see something like that in this country. I really fear for Kamala Harris. Right. And it, it just, to me, we've been, we've been here before. We've seen uh, people assassinate a president. We've seen uh, uh candidate assassinated. We've seen a civil rights leader assassinated. We've seen two of those assassinated actually. Right. Yeah. And an attempt on Ronald Reagan. And it's just the list goes on and it scares me that that could happen again.
it, it just to me it is just wrong wrong and I fear that that kind of mentality in such a large portion of the population is that's scary that's just scary it's not common sense it's not logic and why why would we even think that way yeah. <laughs> I, just, like, I don't understand it something I've I actually said I'm glad my parents are not alive to see this because my father literally fought in both the North Atlantic and the Pacific because of things like that. My husband fought in Vietnam because of things like that. He was deployed to uh, the White House when Nixon was in the White House because they were afraid that uh, they were going to somebody was going to do a siege on the White House uh, when he that was when he was in the Marine Corps. So, you know, I really it's it's frightening. I can't understand how they were able to breach the Capitol in that way, and I hope that they're solving that. Well. Um, it had to do with calling up the National Guard and, oh, not calling them up, calling up the D.C. National Guard and going, uh, but you can't have any weapons and you can't have any riot gear or anything like that. And it, it just, that investigation is going to explain quite a few things. And I don't think some folks are going to like what's going to be found out. I just have this suspicious mind of the old school teacher that says there's something rotten here and you don't get into the capitol building without assistance when it's locked down the other thing is the capitol police were like majorly outnumbered and there's no way that they could you know what do you do you you got a thousand people coming at you and you're one person. Um, I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> you know, every lawmaker that was in that building was in danger. Do you think that when the meeting, the congressional meeting was resumed, there was a unity on the floor between the two parties at that point? I believe that even before that, before this all occurred, there was a, while well, there was a large pod of uh, partisanship as to objecting to uh, certain battleground states, that for the most part, the Democrats and the Republicans had all agreed that the states had certified the ballots and this was supposed to be a pro forma just uh, ceremonial yep okay here's Alaska's votes Uh, this is how many we counted for Trump and here's Wisconsin's votes and here's how many were Biden votes and so they get this number of electoral votes and that well should have been all that it was but all of the GOP senators and uh, congressmen who wanted to object basically stirred the pot. And then when Armageddon came to town, and I'm sure that's what they felt like, quite a few of them had a come to Jesus moment. But there was still this core group who did not want to work together with the other party and certify the votes that had already been counted and recounted. Those That small core group did not want to work with anyone. They wanted it their way or the highway. Yeah. And frankly, my opinion is that they they fueled insurrection right. and that was nothing but insurrection and it was brought about by 
information that they were given when they were called to come to Washington to rally with the president and go from there. And um, one of the most interesting things about the events of January 6th, 2021, is that um, there was a tremendous amount of pressure that had been placed on Vice President Mike Pence by Trump during the preceding rally, uh, if you if you remember. Oh, without a doubt. And I think that Mike Pence put on his big boy panties and said, no, this is what we're doing, this is how we're doing it, and this is what the Constitution says we must do. And he followed the law and the instruction for counting the electoral votes or certifying what had already been certified. And I think he did the best that he could do. From what I understand, he's uh, pulled back to, he's in Blair House and he hasn't uh, come to the White House since. So I I think... uh, Although there are rats deserting a sinking ship, I think Mike Pence actually stood up for principles and proper protocols and did what he needed to do. A lot of other Republican lawmakers as well did did the same. There was a clip of Lindsey Graham that I, I heard and uh, he was saying something to the effect of, you know, Trump and I, we've been through a lot. Uh, this is where I draw the line, though. I'm out. Between him and the minority leader of the Senate, both of them need to go back to their home states and resign. They have done nothing but block legislation and support Trump for four years and not stand up to him like they should have. They did his bidding. They were his handmaidens. That's a personal feeling because there are others who think that they're wonderful, but when you hold up 400 pieces of legislation and won't bring it to the floor of the Senate because the president doesn't like him and won't sign it. Um, And I think that all, all started falling apart in December when Trump vetoed the... Uh, defense bill, defense appropriations, and Congress had to just veto that, or override that veto, because never has a defense appropriation bill not been approved by the president. When you look at what's going on, what went on, many, many people lost their Uh, unemployment benefits because somebody wouldn't sign an extension of those benefits on time. He waited one day long, too long, and so they had to go back through the process of applying for unemployment. Uh, They very nearly lost their homes or their apartments because they can't pay the bills because they don't have a job and they aren't getting unemployment, but gee, they'd like to go to work, but it's not safe. So, you know, we just have an issue. I can remember when uh, the salt vaccine first came out on the sugar cubes and they literally, you went in and they gave you the sugar cube and it was just lines of of people and it was uh the actually the military that was doing it right. manning the, the doctors and nurses were manning the uh stations to drop the right amount of uh, serum on the sugar cube and stuff it in your mouth mm-hmm. um i can remember when they were giving flu shots for one of the Influenza that was pretty bad. Same went to the same auditorium, or cafetorium as it is called, and the same thing. Lines and lines and lines, and you walked in, and they took this gun and shot you in the arm with the uh, um, vaccine, and just literally uh, 
march people through in large numbers. Yeah. This vaccine is so different. It's difficult to kind of line people up and do it. However, 